A couple of times, we heard Mrs. Gillingham call out, boys, keep that noise down, but barring a minute, or two straight, after such commands, we didn't really pay much heed. The crunch, literally, came when Andrew decided to get past a doorway by swinging on the door, only he swung a bit too far and crashed into a side table. Nothing was broken, thank goodness, but it made an awful racket, which brought in Mrs. Gillingham, not looking very happy. How many times have I told you two to be quiet? Now look what you have done. Andrew, go to your room right now and you, young man, she looked straight at me you stay right here. I will be down shortly. With that, she followed her son upstairs. Well, I knew I was in trouble. Big trouble and no matter how I tried to persuade myself otherwise, I couldn't but admit I was quite as guilty as Andrew and we had both, without a doubt, been more than a little naughty. I had never asked Andrew what happened when he was naughty at home, we knew about school, we were both hardened criminals, well used to treading the path to the housemaster's study at bedtime for three quick whacks of the cane, but it dawned on me that I was about to find out. I had my suspicions that it was not just a telling off heading my way. I didn't dare move from the chair that had been indicated to me but I listened, 